Hey everyone, I'm Emma. Before I dive into my story, don't forget to like and subscribe for more. Trust me, you don't want to miss what's coming next. It was a typical sunny afternoon in the city, and I was in my favorite cafe, sipping on a latte, when my phone buzzed. It was David, my fiancé. Emma, we need to talk, it's important. That text sent a shiver down my spine. We had been together for three years, and I thought we were happy. I replied, asking him to meet me at the cafe. Little did I know, my world was about to turn upside down. David walked in, his face serious, eyes avoiding mine. We ordered our usual, but the silence was suffocating. Finally, he spoke. I can't do this anymore, Emma. I'm sorry. It's over. I felt like I'd been punched in the gut. What do you mean? Is there someone else? I managed to ask, my voice trembling. He avoided my eyes. It's not about someone else. It's just... I need to be alone. I couldn't believe it. My perfect relationship, the love of my life, was walking away from me. I felt lost, betrayed, but I didn't know the half of it yet. A couple of weeks later, the bombshell dropped. My best friend, Lily, posted on social media. A picture of her and David, with an engagement ring. I couldn't breathe. Lily had been my confidant, my sister in all but blood. We had shared everything, or so I thought. How long had this been going on? How could they do this to me? I confronted her the next day. How could you, Lily? With David? She had the audacity to look surprised. I thought you knew. We fell in love. It just happened. Just happened? I was seething. You were my best friend. We didn't plan it, Emma. It just, you know, happened. No, I don't know. I was shouting now, tears streaming down my face. You both betrayed me. I walked away from her, from them. I was in a daze, my mind a whirlwind of betrayal and pain, my best friend and my fiancé together. It was a nightmare I couldn't wake up from. I fell into a deep depression. I stopped going out, stopped answering calls. I felt like I had lost everything. My trust was shattered, my heart broken. I didn't know if I could ever recover. Months had slipped by, each day a bit brighter than the last. I had started a new job at a tech firm downtown. A fresh start. That's where I met Alex. A guy with a warm smile and a knack for making everyone laugh. One day, over a shared lunch break, our conversation took a turn from casual work chat to something more personal. I found myself opening up about my past, something I hadn't done in a long time. I can't imagine going through that, Alex said, his voice filled with genuine sympathy. But look at you, turning a new page. Yeah, trying to at least, I replied, offering a small smile. As weeks turned into months, Alex and I grew closer. He wasn't just a colleague. He became a friend. And soon, something more. It was refreshing, being with someone who understood me, who made me laugh again. One evening, after a team dinner, Alex walked me to my car. The city lights twinkled around us, creating a romantic backdrop. He stopped, turning to face me. Emma, I've been meaning to ask you something. He began, his voice hesitant. Would you like to go out on a date with me? Like, a real one? I felt a flutter in my heart. I would love that, Alex. Our relationship blossomed beautifully. He was kind and patient, always there to listen, to support me. With him, I felt safe, valued, and most importantly, loved. A year later, on a crisp autumn evening, Alex took me to the place where we'd had our first date. There was a nervous excitement in his eyes. Emma... These months with you have been the happiest of my life, he said, his voice trembling slightly. You're my best friend, my love, my everything. Will you marry me? Tears of joy welled up in my eyes. Yes, Alex. Yes, I will. Our wedding was a simple but beautiful affair, surrounded by close friends and family. As we exchanged vows, I realized how far I'd come. The pain of the past was still a part of me, but it no longer defined me. Standing there with Alex, I felt a sense of peace and happiness I hadn't thought possible. Life with Alex was an adventure, one that brought both challenges and immense joy. Our little digital marketing firm, which started in the corner of our living room, began to sprout wings. The days were long, often bleeding into nights, but they were ours, filled with dreams and determination. One cool autumn evening, as I was finalizing a project, Alex burst through the door, his face lit up with excitement. 
Emma, you won't believe it. We just landed the Jefferson account. His voice was a mix of disbelief and pride. I jumped up, papers scattering everywhere. No way. That's huge, Alex. We did it, Emma. We really did it. He swept me into his arms, and we danced around the living room, our laughter echoing off the walls. Our business wasn't the only thing growing. Our family was about to get a little bigger. When I found out I was pregnant, I was over the moon. I remember telling Alex, Alex, I have something to tell you. He looked up, concern etching his features. Is everything okay, Emma? Better than okay. We're going to have a baby. The look on his face was priceless. A mix of shock, joy, and something indescribably tender. We're going to be parents, he whispered, tears glistening in his eyes. Life with Jack, our bouncing baby boy, was a whirlwind of diapers, laughter, and sleepless nights. But it was our perfect little whirlwind. And when Sophie joined us two years later, our family felt complete. Our company continued to grow, much like our children. We moved out of our living room into a small office downtown. I remember the day we put up the sign with our company logo. Alex stood back, hands on his hips, a satisfied grin on his face. Look at that, Emma. Who would have thought? I wrapped my arm around his waist. I did. I always knew we could do it. The challenges of balancing work and family life were real, but we tackled them together. There were days when the pressure seemed too much, days when I doubted myself. One such day, I sat at my desk, head in hands, the weight of deadlines looming over me. Alex walked in, a gentle smile on his face. Hey, you okay? I looked up, forcing a smile. Just overwhelmed, I guess. He came over, kneeling beside me. We're a team, Emma. You're not in this alone. Remember that. His words were the balm I needed. Together, we worked through the night, side by side, until the stack of papers on my desk was a little less daunting. Our business wasn't just a company. It was a testament to our journey, from heartbreak to happiness, from struggle to success. We celebrated each milestone, each achievement, as a family. As our company's reputation grew, so did our team. We hired people who shared our passion and drive. I remember the day we welcomed our 10th employee. We gathered everyone in the office for a little celebration. To 10 team members and counting, Alex raised his glass, his eyes sparkling with excitement. To dreams coming true, I added, my heart full. Our team cheered, the sound filling the office with warmth and energy. It was moments like these that reminded me of how far we'd come. Life had thrown its worst at me. But here I was, standing stronger than ever. I had a loving husband, two beautiful children, and a flourishing business. The past, with all its pain and betrayal, seemed like a distant memory, one that no longer held any power over me. Life in our bustling office was a symphony of keyboards clacking, phones ringing, and the occasional laughter. It was a typical Tuesday afternoon, with Alex and I reviewing project timelines, when my phone pinged with a news alert. I glanced at the screen, expecting the usual business updates. But what I saw made my heart skip a beat. It was a news headline about David and his wife, my former best friend, Lily. They had been arrested for embezzlement and fraud. I froze, staring at the phone. Alex noticed my sudden silence. Emma, what's wrong? You look like you've seen a ghost. I handed him the phone wordlessly. As he read, his eyebrows shot up in surprise. Isn't that your ex fiance and... I nodded, a strange cocktail of emotions swirling inside me. Yeah, it is. Our employees, sensing the shift in atmosphere, began to gather around. Curious. I quickly composed myself, not wanting to air my personal history in the office. Let's discuss this later. I whispered to Alex. He nodded, understanding. That evening at home, the kids tucked in bed. Alex and I sat down with a glass of wine, the news article open on the laptop. This is... Wow, I don't even know what to say, Alex muttered, scrolling through the details. I sipped my wine, lost in thought. I never imagined they'd end up like this. Do you feel... I don't know, happy about it? Alex asked cautiously. I shook my head. Not happy. It's more like, closure maybe? They hurt me deeply, and now they're facing the consequences of their actions. Alex reached over, taking my hand. I'm just glad you're far away from all that mess now. Yeah, me too. I squeezed his hand, a sense of relief washing over me. The next day at work, the news had spread among our team. I addressed it briefly during our morning meeting. 
I appreciate your concern, everyone. It's a part of my past, and it's where I want it to stay. Let's focus on our work. The team nodded, and we moved on to our daily tasks. But inside, I felt a chapter of my life closing, a chapter filled with pain and betrayal. A few days later, my phone rang. It was an old mutual friend of David, Lily, and me. Emma, have you heard about David and Lily? Yeah, I saw the news. There's more to it. They've been doing this for years. David even bragged about fooling you back then. Anger flared within me, but it was quickly doused by a sense of pity. I feel sorry for them, I replied. They've lost everything. The call ended, and I sat there, reflecting. David and Lily had chosen their path, a path of deceit and wrongdoing. And now, they were paying the price. That night, as Alex and I lay in bed, I told him about the call. I can't believe he bragged about hurting you, Alex said, his voice tight with anger. It doesn't matter anymore, Alex. They're just a sad story now. He pulled me close, and I rested my head on his chest, comforted by his steady heartbeat. Emma, you're the strongest person I know. I smiled in the darkness. I had to be, and now I have you and the kids. That's all that matters. As I drifted off to sleep, I realized that I had truly moved on. The pain David and Lily caused was a distant memory, a scar that had healed over time. I was in a better place, surrounded by love and success. Life had a way of balancing itself out. For every pain, there was healing. For every betrayal, there was loyalty. And for every end, there was a new beginning. Months had passed since the news of David and Lily's arrest. Our life was a whirlwind of business meetings, kids' soccer games, and family dinners. It was during one such busy day that I received a letter, postmarked from the prison. As I opened it, my hands trembled slightly. The letter was from David and Lily, filled with words of remorse and apologies. They spoke of regret, of realizing too late the pain they had caused. They even invited me to visit them, to see their remorse in person. I was stunned. Part of me wanted to believe in their change of heart, but the scars of their betrayal ran deep. Alex, listen to this, I said as he walked in. I read the letter aloud. He listened intently, his brow furrowing. I don't trust it, Emma. It could be a trap, or they might be trying to drag you into their mess. I... I don't know what to do. Emma, you've moved on. You have nothing to gain from seeing them. It's likely just another one of their manipulations. His words resonated with me. I knew he was right. I had built a new life, one far removed from the shadows of David and Lily. So, I wrote back. I told them that while I hoped they truly regretted their actions, I couldn't forgive them, that their choices had consequences, and they were living them. I asked them not to contact me again. Dropping the letter in the mailbox felt like lifting a weight off my shoulders. A few weeks later, I was in the office, overseeing the final touches on a big project. The kids were with Alex at his parents' place. I took a moment, looking out the window at the bustling city below. It was in moments like these that I often reflected on my journey. My phone rang, snapping me out of my reverie. It was Alex. Hey love, how's the project going? Almost done. How are the kids? They're having a blast. Jack's learning to bake cookies with Grandma. I smiled. That's sweet. I can't wait to be home with you all. We can't wait either. Listen, Emma. I've been thinking about that letter. You did the right thing. You've always been the strongest person I know. Thanks, Alex. It wasn't easy, but I feel at peace now. Good. That's all I ever want for you. As I hung up, I realized how complete my life was. I had a loving husband, amazing kids, and a thriving business. I had found happiness in places I never thought to look. That evening, back home, as I watched Alex and the kids laughing in the kitchen, covered in flour, I knew I had made the right choice. The past was behind me, and ahead was a future filled with love, laughter, and success. The journey hadn't been easy, but it had led me here, to this moment of pure contentment. I had not only survived the betrayal and heartbreak, but I had also thrived, building a life far richer than I could have imagined. As I joined my family in the kitchen, hugging them close, I felt a deep sense of gratitude. Life had come full circle, and I was exactly where I was meant to be. Has there ever been a moment in your life where forgiving someone seemed impossible? Share your thoughts on Emma's decision to not forgive David and Lily. 
Do you think she made the right choice? Or would you have handled it differently? Your stories and opinions are valuable, so let's discuss in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this journey with Emma, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more stories like this. Your support means a lot, and it helps us to continue bringing you engaging content. Thanks for watching.